here tonight to continue on with our series and wrap up this series called Playlist. How many guys have you heard on the radio, Scars to Beautiful this week, and only thought about how Jesus made you a masterpiece? Anybody listen to Scars to Beautiful and hear like, oh, that was Jesus made me beautiful. So last week we talked about this idea of, we took the song Scars to Beautiful, and we, we went through the idea that God created you to be beautiful. And not only did he create you to be beautiful, but he called you his masterpiece. Ephesians 2.10, to do good works that he planned for you a long time to go. A long time ago. And so tonight we're going to continue on on the series, on playlists, using songs that you listen to on the radio all the time, and bring out a gospel message into it. And so tonight's song we're going to talk about is something just like this. do 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 Yeah, I know you guys know that. All right. So let's go ahead and let's just dive right into it. I'm going to put the lyrics up on the screen for you. I'm going to read it for you as well. So the lyrics of this song goes like this. I've been reading books of old, the legends and the myths, Achilles and his gold, Hercules and his gifts, Spider-Man's control and Batman with his fists, and clearly I don't see myself upon that list. But she said, where do you want to go? How much you want to risk? I'm not looking for somebody with some superhuman gifts, some superhero, some fairy tale bliss, just something I can turn to, somebody I can kiss. I want something just like this. I already heard some of you guys seeing this as I was telling you what the lyrics are. And so what I love about this song is that this song is about a man who is looking over his life and beginning to compare his gifts and abilities to Greek myths and superheroes. Fake images of perfection that he doesn't add up to, and he sees himself of having little to no value compared to those guys. Now, if I asked everybody in this room who their favorite superhero is, what would you shout out? Batman! Batman. I didn't hear a single person say Superman. What is wrong with y'all? Y'all know Superman is undefeatable. No one beats... Superman. Wrong generation. Thus the name Superman. He can't be killed. It's the Superman. And then so when we look at superheroes today, sometimes in this song, what I like, in this song, he begins to compare himself to the images of perfection that doesn't even exist. How many of you guys find yourself doing that often when you look in the mirror? The comparison game. Looking at things that don't exist, man, I wish I had a body like Brad Pitt back in the day. You know what I'm saying? And I wish I looked like The Rock. I wish I could be Hercules. Hercules. <laughs> no, none of you guys. Yeah. Hercules. Hercules. Come on now. I wish I had a body like Kim Kardashian, but you don't have a million dollars to make it happen, so stop dreaming about it. Okay, sorry, that was a little random. I apologize. So, so in this song, this man is comparing his life against fake images, and then all of a sudden this girl comes along, and this girl begins to tell him, hey, I'm not looking for somebody with superhero gifts. I'm, you're, I, I, I don't want a man comparing himself to other people, and this girl begins to tell him, I don't want a fairy tale, I'm just looking for somebody real. And she begins to outline to this guy what a real hero looks like. She says it's like this. I want somebody who's willing to take risks. Someone who will be adventurous. Someone who will be present and available. And someone she can be intimate with. And so tonight I want to remind you that Christ is looking for those same qualities in you. Christ is looking for somebody who's not a superhero, not somebody who's perfect, but he is looking for someone just like you, someone who is willing to take risks, someone who is willing to be adventurous, someone who is willing to be present and available, somebody he can be intimate with. He is looking for somebody just like you. Turn to your neighbor and say, just like you. Just like you. Turn to your other neighbor and say, just like me. Just like me. I want you to know this tonight. You are perfectly designed to fulfill God's calling in your life because He perfectly created you for it. Paul Psalms 139, 13 through 14 says this For you were created in my inmost being. 
You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Think about that for just one moment. Before this whole entire creation ever existed, because we believe God created the heavens and the earth. Before this entire creation ever existed, God sat back and he began to think about you. And he was like, I wonder what gifts and talents I want Sapphire to have. I wonder what personalities and qualities I want Nick to have. I wonder what hair color I want JJ to have. I want to know what kind of muscle tone I want Cameron to have. Before creation existed, God was thinking about you, how he wanted you to look. All the way from every color, every every piece of hair, the Bible says he knows every hair on your head, whether it's there or not. He knows every hair on your head, so he knows your hair. Before you were born, he knew your hair, he knew your eyes, he knew your teeth, he knew your voice. He knew all about you, all the way down to the hair on your toes and your funky toenails. And he created you just like that because he said that is the perfect way for that person to fulfill my purpose in their life. You may look at yourself and all you see is what you're not, but God looks at you and sees all that you are, and he wants somebody just like you. You may look at yourself and see all that you're not. You may look in the mirror and see that you wish you were something else, wish you had something else. You may look and see all that you're not, but God looks at you and sees all that you are, and he wants somebody just like you. Watch the video.
What does that mean? If God is looking for somebody just like you, what does that mean? Well, it means that God wants to use you. So how do you become used by God in your life? It's going to be real simple. I want you to pay attention because it's going to be really hard to memorize. All right? It goes like this. Be available. Be obedient. Turn to your neighbor and say, be available. Turn to your other neighbor and say, be obedient. Turn to your neighbor and say, be available. Turn to your other neighbor, be obedient. Obedient. Isaiah 6, 8 says this, that I heard of the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. God is actively looking for young people to stand up and say, Here I am, I will go. God created you to be a masterpiece. He created you for a purpose. He created you to fulfill it. And he wants to use you. But you have to first say, Lord, here I am. And then when he calls you, you have to be obedient. For example, how many of you guys like toys? How about fidget spinners? Who likes fidget spinners? Who would like, who would like a fidget spinner? Who, who likes fidget spinners? Who, who like, Serena, heads up. Who wants a fidget spinner? Fidget spinners, all right? I don't have any So fidget spinners. Now, let me ask you guys this. If you saw a fidget spinner in a package for your entire life and it never was played with, what would you think about that fidget spinner? I'd be like, you poor fidget spinner. No one ever used you? <laughs> I would cry for the fidget My lightsaber. Could you imagine that this amazing lightsaber with its light up and its sound <laughs> would just sit in a box untouched by, by children everywhere? Like it was Woody or Buzz Lightyear and it just got stuffed in a box and no one ever got to play with it? And you'd be like, what a waste of a toy. It never got to fulfill its purpose. But God looks at you in the same way and says, what a waste. When is it going to realize it was created for a purpose? When will it allow me? When will you allow God to use you for his purpose? Some of you need to start taking the wrapping off of your life, come out of the package and be like, Lord, here I am. Use me. Don't waste your life being stuck in a package. Don't waste your life being stuck somewhere. Don't waste your life being untouched. God created you to fulfill something. God created you for a purpose. He designed you specifically for this moment in time to do something that no one else could. And that's why you're his masterpiece. So every time you wake up in the morning, you've got to say, God, here I am. Use me today. Every time you go to your school, you need to walk, walk into the school doors and say, God, here I am. Use me today. Every time you talk to your friend, you've got to say, Lord, I was created for a purpose. I'm your masterpiece. I'm your tool. Use me in your hands. Here I am. Send me. Use me today. Every time you go into the church, you need to go, Lord, I'm here. I'm, use me today. I'm available. Tell me what you want to do. And be obedient. There's a portion of scripture in Hebrews 11. It's called the Hall of Faith or the, the Hall of Heroes. And you'll recognize some of these names if you've been in the church world long enough. These are men who people consider the heroes of our faith, the heroes of the Bible. You may have heard of this dude named Noah. Noah built a boat and preserved all of creation. Who built the ark? Who built the ark? Listen, you know your boss if somebody wrote a song about you. You know what I'm saying? Abraham, the father of the faith. Father Abraham and then his sons. And then his sons had a boss. See, you know him. He's a boss. He's a hero. He has a song named after him. He has his own theme music. Moses delivered Israel out of Egypt and wrote the first five books of the Bible. David, a man after God's own heart, considered the greatest king in Israelite history. Jesus came from his lineage. These are the heroes of the faith. These are the people they tell you to aspire to. But can I tell you the Bible doesn't honor them for their perfection, but only because of their willingness to say, Lord, here I am, you see. 
Because if you didn't know any better, you'd think that's all those guys did. But if you look a little bit deeper and you read your Bible, you would understand that Noah got so drunk one time that he passed out in front of his own kids. Naked. I was going to add the naked part, but naked. Abraham lied about his relationship with his wife twice so that she got married to two different men before God had to step in and prevent something from happening. I mean, come on. You trade off your wife so that you live? Not just once, but twice? Something that's not with that. That would straight. <laughs> listen, she punches hard. Now that she has that ring on her hand, listen, there's times when she needs an index in my arms. She's like, I'm just playing. I'm like, oh my God, I'm playing <laughs> Moses murdered people. David had adultery with another woman. Then went over, had her husband killed in battle. David, the heroes of the faith. They aren't heroes because of their perfection. They're heroes because they said, Lord, here I am, use me. And because they were available, God did amazing things in their lives. When you are willing to do what others won't, God will use you to accomplish what others can't. When you are willing to do what others won't, God will use you to accomplish what others can't. When you are willing to do what others won't, God will use you to accomplish what you, what others cannot. Can I get a witness? I thought you guys would play a little bit better than that, right? Glory, glory. So let's recap and let's bring this all back together. God is looking for somebody just like you because he created you for this moment in time to do good works, which he created long ago. He considers you a masterpiece. God doesn't make junk. God makes masterpieces. And you might not like all that you see in the mirror, but God sees you and he says, I love that. I love you. I created you to have that nose. I created you to have that hair. I created you to have those eyes and that voice and that personality and that wisdom and that personality. I created, I want that. I, you don't change anything. I want improve, get better, stretch yourself, but do it under me. I want to use you to do great things. And if you would just reach out and say, God, here I am, I will go. God will use you to do things that others cannot even think or imagine. Not because you're perfect. Because you are obedient and available when God called your number. Amen. Everybody in here wants to be a hero at one point of our lives, right? I, I can think of like Pastor Anthony during the uh, message on Sunday morning when he grabbed that flag and he's running around the stage. And Becca looked at me and she's like, he wishes he was back in the 1970, 1970 or the 1700s running like Willie Walk, running through the battlefield. Follow me! I mean, that's just like Pastor Anthony. He wants to be that hero. I would do it. And there's many times in our lives where we get put in situations where we have the opportunity to be a hero. Like in the ninth inning with two outs, two runners on down and one, and you're up at the plate. And the only thing you can think of is I'm going to be a hero. Then you strike out and you fail and you're like, I'm never going to do that again. Last quarter of the game, you're running down the field, the pass is coming to you, you drop it and you look like it. Everybody in the world tells you you're a failure because you lost the high school football game. But God's looking at you and said, that's not my purpose for you. It's not to catch footballs, but it's for you to save souls. So we stop back and we, we say, I'm never going to do that again. I'm never going to put myself out there again. I'm never going to step out in faith and do what God has called me. I'm never going to put myself in a situation to be a hero. I don't compare to the legends in the myths. I don't compare to Superman in the myths. I don't compare to Spider-Man. I'm not a hero. I'm going to step back and play my life safe. But God said, I didn't create you to be safe. I created you to be adventurous, to take risks, to step out in faith. And if you would be available in obedience to me, you will see all that I can accomplish. In and through you. God created you. He wants someone just like you. Why don't you stand to your feet with me tonight? We do this every single week. Because the purpose of this, of this meeting is not just to develop you to become better disciples of Jesus Christ. It's for those who are not know that does not know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, that they can become a part of the family of Christ the church. So tonight, if you would just bow your head and close your eyes.
And we're looking around. All cell phones down, fidget spinners down. Everybody just take a moment, breathe, relax, and take a moment to reflect what you just heard. If you're in this room tonight, and you say, I want to be a hero, Ryan. I want to be used to do great things. I want to be used by God. I want to fulfill my purpose, which I was created for. The only way that that can happen first is if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Ephesians 2.10 says, we are God's masterpiece through Christ. Unless you are in Christ, you cannot fulfill that calling that is on your life. And if you would like to make that commitment tonight, if you would like to fulfill your purpose, if you want to be available by God to be used by Him to do great things, you have to first make the decision to make Christ Lord and Savior of your life and submit to Him and His ways. Turn your life over to Him just like He turned His life over for you. Died on the cross. Three days later, defeated death, hell, and the grave, rose to life, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven, waiting for us to join with Him in eternity in a place where there's no more sorrow, no more pain, no more sin, no more frustration, a place of joy and light where sin and darkness and evil will never exist for the rest of time. If you would like to make that decision tonight that you've never made before, and you'd like to say, Ryan, here I am. I want to make Christ my Lord and Savior for the first and last time. Would you take a moment and raise your hand and let me acknowledge you? Awesome. I'm so grateful that each and every one of you have already made that commitment. And if you're struggling with that commitment, I want you to know you're not alone. We all struggle with this at times. This walk of faith is not easy, it's difficult, it's an adventure, and it is a risk, but it's a risk worth taking if you're willing to follow it out. And so maybe tonight you say, Ryan, I need to become more satisfied in who God has created me to be. I want to begin to look at myself not as junk or worthless or valueless, but I want to begin to see me the way Christ sees me. I want to become a hero. I want to become a legend of the faith. I want to be used by God to do great and mighty things. I want you to just simply lift up your hand. I want everybody to look around. I want you to lift up your hand if that's you. If you want to be used by God to do great and mighty things, I want you to lift up your hands if that's you. Now I want you, everybody to look around and see everybody lifting up their hands in this room. See, we're not alone. And too many times we look at ourselves and we say, I'm the only one who wants to stand out for Christ. I'm the only one who wants to do something amazing for Christ. But the reality is, if you don't have people standing beside you, you'll never be successful by yourself. Look at everybody in this room with their hands up. They want to work with you. They want to be a part. We are a family. We're supposed to be a tribe. We're supposed to be here to support and love each other. So now, I want you to lay your hands on the person beside you. And we're going to pray for each other. We're going to pray that God would use us, would strengthen us, would, would uh, bring us to a mindset that we want to be available and obedient to what he has called us to be. So Heavenly Father, I pray over these young people. Father, they have made a decision to follow you. Lord, they have made a decision to come under you, Lord, as their Lord and Savior. They have made a commitment to you, Lord, and the world has lied to them and told them they have no value because they don't look a certain way, because they don't act a certain way, because they don't have the right physical abilities to be able to be cool and hip and popular. They don't have the financial resources, so they don't deserve life. Lord, I just pray against the lie of the enemy that would tell them that they are worthless and defeated. Father, for they are your masterpiece. You have created them to do good works. You created them to look exactly the way they do, to be able to make the right friends, to have the right sphere of influence. Lord, we're all part of the body of Christ. We all can't be the head. We all can't be the feet. We all can't be the hands. But when we are united as one working together we can accomplish things that no one else can because we can say Lord here am I send me here am I send me so Lord I pray tonight that these young people will be filled with courage that they will be filled with bravery Lord that they will be filled with wisdom that you would begin to encourage them as they walk out in faith encourage them as they interact with people encourage them speak to them let them know that I want to use you in that moment I want you to be a 
obedient to speak life into people. And Lord, let your, your, your spirit flow through them to see signs and wonders in ways they've never seen before. So that they know that there is a God in heaven. That people would know that you're still on the throne. That you are in control. And you have a church that is fully functioning in the way that we're supposed to. To go and make disciples of Jesus Christ. So, Lord, I seal that in their hearts. I just pray your favor and your blessing upon each and every one of them tonight. In Jesus' name, and everyone said...